Hello and welcome to the Cosmic Outpost. I'm Alex and welcome back to another story focus. Of course, we're still looking at Star Trek Battlefront, also known as Star Trek Discovery. We've got two episodes to cover this week, uh, episodes four and five. Um, two very different episodes, so we'll cover that in just a moment. As a reminder, there will be a, a spoiler-free part in this front section, and then towards the end of the video, we'll be looking at the spoiler part, where I assume you can have watched the uh, uh, episode. So, uh, moving on then. So, yes, episode three. Uh, no, episode four, actually. So, episode four was a drama story. Uh, it carried on straight after uh, episode three, um, where we'd had some adventure. Uh, something got brought back to the ship that was uh, very important. And there wasn't a hell of a story to this uh, episode. It just followed on from the events, um, having to improve the ship from the thing they found. And that was about it. Um, there were some nice adventure elements in it because obviously once they'd improved the ship they were able to do things because this is after all Battlefront and uh, they are fighting a war with the Klingons so um, it kind of reminded me uh, of an episode of the Star Trek The Next Generation I think it was towards the beginning of the uh, run where Data waits until the exact moment before they warp in to say save the day or at least picks up the captain with enough time to go off and, and save save the day. Um, so we knew there wasn't going to be any particular danger uh, to it, because hey, this is Star Trek, everything uh, works out okay. Um, but it, it, it sort of like proved that the ship uh, could do what it was uh, supposed to do, because the episodes thus far in this drama series have been uh, figuring out what the ship is all about, what it can do. Uh, the next episode was a very different uh, kettle of fish. It was very much a almost fifth season, uh, sixth season uh, Star Trek Next Generation episode. Uh, episode uh, season five of um, Deep, Deep Space Nine. It could have happened anywhere in that season. I won't give too much away, but something happens to a member of the crew and that member of the crew has to escape um, and the other crew are looking for, for, for that person. It gave a great amount of time for the people to develop um, some character, which we've not had in these drama-driven episodes. Um, if you look at the story Gambit, part one and part two, um, in, the, in that particular episode, Captain Picard and Commander Riker both disappear. So we're left with uh, Data and Worf to battle it out on who's the better commander. And uh, there's, there's some good development uh, in, in there. And we get to see some of the crew uh, in, in this episode. We get a little bit more on, uh, not the chief medical officer, but uh, a nurse or, or, or something. Um, you also get to know a bit more about the first officer. A bit more about the science officer and it was just nice to see this Star Trek character uh, development which has been really missing from uh, the first few episodes of Star Trek Battlefront. Um, it was good, it still had the, the drama um, because after all we have to uh, you know, have this uh, crew member escape, I won't say what from, that's for the spoiler parts. Um, and it was a really good Star Trek episode, not Star Trek drama episode. So I don't quite know where Star Trek Discovery is going to pitch itself because my wife certainly enjoyed the Star Trek uh, episode with the character development more so than the Star Trek drama uh, episode where they are literally going from one place to another place to another place to progress the drama where, where we don't see hardly any character development. Um, other than uh, the people that the story is mainly focusing on. Um, so yeah, that was nice to see the contrast in the in the episodes, quite how the Star Trek uh, Discovery will push on, because we're a third of the way through the seasons. Remember, there's only 15 episodes. It's not a full 22-episode season. So yeah, we've really got to see quite where they're going to take this. So um, yeah, I think that about wraps it up for the uh, spoiler-free part. Mm -hmm. 
Now we've had uh, a bit of an event on the Cosmic Outpost uh, before we move on to the spoiler section. We've launched the Cosmic Outpost. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, we're moving into production of our comic book, The Cosmic Outpost. And we'd like to take you along uh, with us on this journey. Um, below in the links, uh, you'll find a link to sign up to the newsletter. Um, we're going to email you about five or six emails over the course of the next five or six months, so not a great huge amount of uh, email traffic coming your way. Just some things that we think you'll enjoy and updates on the project, because eventually we will get to uh, a Kickstarter and we will need um, support, whether you share that with your friends or want to uh, chip in. But if you're watching this video now, it would help the Cosmic Outpost greatly and if you could subscribe to our newsletter so we can take you with us on this journey as we make our comic book because that's that's what we're watching all these stories for not not because we enjoy them well we, we do a bit um, but it's because we break down the story elements and find okay that works let's put that in the comic and okay right so how can we do that and make it less obvious like they made it really obvious in this particular episode so um yeah do check out the uh, link in the description and i really hope you'll be uh, subscribing to that newsletter so you can join us on the journey on the cosmic outpost <laughs> Right then, spoilers time. I didn't think there was a huge amount of story. It was get the drive working. Um, they bought over the technology from the Glen. They had this tardigrade, which I thought was very, very cool that they called, called it a tardigrade and they had this space living organism. I liked how uh, the tardigrade was something completely unseen in Star Trek um, lore before. You know, something that just lives in this network and beam itself around. Why there's not more than one, because realistically you'd have thought, well, there should be at least a breeding colony of these things that they should be able to uh, find in the uh, network. But um, hey, they've, they've only managed to uh, track down one, and the Glen did that, and how the Glen did that isn't really explained. But the, the space tardigrade um, is cool. Um, finding out that they, you know, stick it in uh, the, this machine was kind of handy, you know, I'd like like more development or, or, on that. Um, but it was pretty cool to see the drive activate, then blast in uh, to save the day on the uh, mining uh, colony, uh, dive, dive in, fire off, stand over there to say, no, no, let's just wait. Just wait, bring them in closer, bring them in closer, and boom! You know, they released those uh, mines or torpedoes or, or whatever the, where they are, and they just spun out, which was uh, really good. Nice humanitarian lead into the next episode, um, which, as I said in the first one, was a much more character-driven uh, episode, which is really nice uh, to see. You had... Uh, the first officer becoming captain and going, oh crap, I've got, I've got to be a captain. I've got to be good. Nice shout out to all those uh, Star Trek captains that we saw on the view screen there. Um, and it was nice how he started saying, right, okay, I've got to be like these guys to be a successful captain. How can I do the computer start along? Nice bit of character development because he says he feels, you know, later on in the episode, um, sorry, Michael says, you feel uh, worried about me, scared about me. And it's kind of like, well, okay, you know, somebody with this self-doubt is, is a nice character trait. So you have this first officer admitting you know, he was jealous of Michael uh, learning under uh, uh, Captain Giorgio. Giorgio, no, um, Captain Giorgio, um, because she was able to give Michael all the stuff he wanted to learn when uh, she got, um, uh, when Michael rather, uh, got her own command. That was really, really nice uh, to, to see that. Captain Lorca, yeah, we knew he was a badass, and just the fact of no, I I I I blew up my own crew because I knew what was waiting with them. You know, kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Michael Ironside's character in uh, Starship Troopers, where this trooper gets carried away, and he just picks up his gun, bang, shoots the trooper. Uh, Captain Picard, when that guy got assimilated in, into uh, being a Borg, zap! Oh wow, you know, you you uh, you killed him, and then when Picard's blowing away all those Borg on the holodeck, he's like, wow. This guy's wearing a uniform. Yes, yes, it was Ensign Kelly. I, I knew him well. It was just like, wow. Wow, well, that, that's what it takes to be a Star Trek captain, to save your crew from a fate worse than death. <sighs> tough call, tough call. But yes, Lorca, um, very, very 
hard ass uh, in, in, in this one. Not too sure what the point of him being captured was, because I was thinking, oh right, okay, it, it's going to be the, the uh, uh, pale-faced Klingon and uh, the woman that came back for him uh, in, in, in the last episode, kidnapping him, saying, tell us about the ghost ship, we want to know all about the ghost ship, what's the ghost ship? No, 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 we're just going to leave him in this cell with Harry Mudd, because he's coming in for five episodes, we need to introduce him somehow. Yeah, you you know this guy's the the, the leader of of the uh, ship. To get him, didn't torture him about the secrets and, and everything. So uh, yeah, that that didn't seem as relentless as as it, as it could be. Um, the Star Trek uh, Admiralty plan, uh, sorry, Starfleet Admiralty plan, that was daft. You're worried about the uh, discovery. Get it back into space dock. Figure out what makes it work. Because you're absolutely right. You know, you're going to lose this prime asset. Um, I, I thought they'd be sending it on, on loads of mission. But as my wife pointed out, no, 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 it is an asset. And the Admiral um, came around and said, no, no, no. We want you to take it easy, uh, Lorca. And so Lorca gets taken out of the picture. So we can have a nice, pliable ex-science officer. OK, we're really sorry your captain's gone missing. We're going to send the t uh, Federation task fleet in to uh, get him. And uh, you take your, your ship back to our uh, study so we can actually find it. No, nope, no, no, they throw that out the window. Right, let's take our most highly advanced piece of uh, technology, send it after the Kling, uh, send it after the captain, captured by the Klingons, who should be saying, well, we've captured their uh, captain, they're bound to send their, their own crew to rescue their captain, let's have a whole load of bird of prey, so when that ship drops out of warp or whatever ghost drive it has, we'll be able to uh, capture it and um, discover all its secrets. No, 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 you know, you know they, they, they just kind of like didn't bother with that either. Um, so Admiral sends the uh, ship into Klingon space to rescue the captain in this highly precious one of a kind ship. And the Klingons don't even bother defending uh, their uh, prized captain who they went to great pains to uh, steal. So, you know, it, it was a good... Uh, character development but come on you guys think about it you, you got a prize here so um yeah not 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 too sure about that um we had some foreshadowing that uh if you go into the uh drive it's it's gonna hurt and it was nice to see michael having empathy with the uh, uh tardigrade i really would have thought the first officer uh, sorry, uh, the um, acting captain, first stroke first officer, would have had more empathy. Remember, he came from a group of uh, aliens that originally weren't thought to be sentient and were slaughtered like cattle. That's why I call him Cowman. Um, so I would have thought he would have been more on the side of the tardigrade and, you know, somebody else, you know, diving in. Unfortunately, you know, they bumped off the chief of security. Come on, she could have survived that, no problem. Um, that, that, that's why, you know, the fifth episode uh, was very different to the fourth episode where the chief, uh, uh, security chief, chief died. That was very much a drama series. If you're not progressing the plot, you're not on screen. This time you had more uh, in, in the uh, previous episode, episode five, you had more characters who weren't essential uh, to the plot, they were adding to the story rather than just, just the plot. So I thought that was very interesting, the way they did that. Um, the story ended up with, uh, you know, uh, Stemmons or whatever it's called, going into the Mycelial Drive, seeing the network, going a little bit bonkers, and I thought, yeah, you've just seen the entire universe, and that's not done anything to your mind. No, I'm fine, you know, I'm just going to clean my teeth, my boyfriend. Okay, whatever works. Um, and now I'm stepping away from the mirror. And the reflection's still there? Okay, now that's very cool. What does that mean? Has he gone mad? Is he in the uh, mirroring universe already? Um, I don't know. Um, but that, that was very exciting to see. One thing uh, I really didn't want to see in Star Trek was when the Ensign uh, turned and said, yeah, this is cool. Really? Kids are going to watch this show. You know, you can't have, you know, Americans call them F-bombs. You can't say the F-word in, in Star Trek. I mean, you could kind of get away with, you know, when uh, Michael was running away from the uh, Tardigrade. But, you know, 
Star Trek needs to stay uh, stay away from swearing. You know, they're enough uh, under enough pressure as it is from CBS to make this show work. You don't need a whole bunch of middle Americans going, they swore on the show, we're cancelling our subscription. Because they will. I think that that just that swear word is going to damage uh, the Star Trek series. And, you know, we want this Star Trek series to, to carry on. Whether it is going to become a Star Trek drama or a Star Trek series remains to be seen. I really do think... Um, they should stick with the drama. I know we'd lose the, you know, character driven uh, episodes, but if you've only got 15 episodes to get from uh, Mutineer in Starfleet through to uh, Garth of Izar and the Hero of Axanar, you know, that's a very short space of time because that, that's where I believe this, you know, this story is going. You know, he's called Gabriel. Gabriel will, can become Garth. Um, Izar, I don't know, we'll, 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 we'll find out there. Um, you know, CBS came down on the fan film uh, Axanar because of this, you know, because well, we're basically setting Star Trek Battlefront Stroke Discovery in the Axanar uh, run up uh, to that uh, particular battle. We're establishing uh, Lork as a badass. Um, We've established we've got a mutineer on board because uh, if you go back to the original series, there was a mutiny on board his ship. Well, I wonder who's going to lead that then. Uh, Michael, perhaps? Oh, I don't know. Um, and he gets chucked off on that planet. Captain Kirk uh, discovers him uh, later on. But two good episodes. Um, I like the drama side of things. I like the character-driven uh, uh, things. <sighs> Who's going to win? There's only one way to find out. Fight! No, no, no. We, can, we can't do that. Um, I'm rambling now, but um, thanks for watching the Cosmic Outpost. Uh, I really do hope you subscribe to the newsletter because that's where the Cosmic Outpost is going. I want to tell you all about our comic, take you along for that journey, just like Star Trek Discovery is taking us along uh, for this particular journey. So thanks very much, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye.